Hello, it's Rebecca and today is another book review day and this one is my 21st book that I've been reading for the 2015 reading challenge. I will put a little link down below in the description box to explain what the challenge is about but basically you just have to read 52 books over a year with each book coming from a different category. And the book that I've been reading this week comes from the category of a non-fiction book. So the book that I've been reading is The Masonic Manual by Robert McCoy. Now this one is quite difficult to review because it is a manual and it would be like reviewing a car manual or the book that comes when you buy a new DVD player or a new television. It's just a how-to but I will talk to you about the book. I will try to focus on the book as it is rather than the Masonic Order, but things will get a little bit mixed up. That's the nature of the beast, really. There's no blurb, as it is a manual, but there is a little bit on the inside that I will just read to you. The Masonic Manual, a pocket companion for the initiated, containing the rituals of Freemasonry, embraced in the degrees of the Lodge, Chapter and Encampment, embellished with upwards of 300 engravings, together with forms of Masonic documents, notes, songs, dates, etc., compiled and arranged by Robert McCoy, Past Master, Past Grand Secretary, Past Grand Commander, Grand Recorder, etc. So, for those of you that don't know, Freemasonry is a secret society, and because <laughs> it's a secret, I'm quite interested in it. I have, I wouldn't say I've researched the Masonic Order, but every now and then I watch a few YouTube videos or I read up about it, because if something is secret, it makes you want to know what's going on. Which then kind of confused me that I could borrow this book from the library, because if it is a secret society, why has this been published for people to have free access to? Um, I also had a quick look on Amazon just to see if it was available to buy on Amazon and it is and again I'm, I'm kind of wondering why if it's supposed to be secret so I'm a little bit not concerned but kind of wondering why a secret society would allow its manual to be out there in the world. I would have assumed that if you were part of the Masons, once you became initi initiated into the group, you'd be given one of these and it would be kind of a secret, sacred thing that you kept with you, not for anyone else to read. So that does make me wonder whether or not what is written in here is actually what goes on at a Masonic Lodge. I don't know, just, you know, just my brain working. So they are a secret society, it's a male only society, which I kind of didn't realise, well I did, it's a male only secret society and when I was talking to a colleague at work this week while reading this book, she said to me, do you think you should be allowed to have read this being a woman? And I assume I'm not allowed to read this being a woman, but again, I could borrow it from the library, I could buy it from Amazon, so again, not too sure, not too sure. If it's supposed to be secret and only for men, it's out there and I'm a woman and I've read it. So it basically just tells you a little bit of the history of Freemasonry, what they do, why they were set up, and it goes through some of the ceremonies of the initiated into the society. Um, you start off at the bottom and you can work your way up through various degrees and it goes up to like, I don't know, a million degrees. I don't know the exact, but it's you can go up higher and higher and higher. And it starts off telling you that masonry is a very moral, upstanding group. They want to do everything properly, they want to help sobriety is very important, honesty is very important, just living a very moral, honest, true way of life, which I haven't got any problems with and that's that's fine. It then kind of goes on to tell about what you need to do to be a part of the Masons and you can't just rock up at a lodge, a lodge is kind of their meeting hall, you can't just rock up there and knock on the door and say I'd like to be a Mason, you have to be selected, 
they then look into your background to make sure that you're not a crazed criminal and if you are deemed suitable then you're taken along and you have to go through these ceremonies and there's always been some sort of iffy thing about cere the ceremonies of of the masons with um you know do you have to roll up your trouser leg do you have to expose part of your body do you, you know all these strange things secret handshakes all that kind of stuff that's not mentioned in the book it's just the speeches that are given by the higher up masons when initiating lower down masons um and it's quite interesting to to see what actually well what i assume goes on not not sure if this is 100 percent accurate because it's still supposed to be secret it isn't a religion but it uses a lot of religious imagery it insists that to become a mason you don't have to believe in the God of the Bible, but you have to believe in some higher deity. And this deity, regardless of who it is, is the grand architect of the universe or the great architect of the universe. And that's who the prayers go to. But it's very confusing because they do quote the Bible a lot and use certain biblical passages and biblical people as a basis for a lot of what they do. But the setup of the Masons does go against Christianity and the general, not the general rules of Christianity, but the things set out in the Bible where God is the only one you should worship and that's who you should pray to they don't it's it's very iffy when it comes to things like that they don't they they worship each other and they worship this grand architect which isn't god it's this grand architect and they believe that when they die they go to the great lodge in the sky which again goes against biblical teachings so although it says it's not a religion and you don't have to be a christian to belong to it they use the bible to suit them when they want and I found that a bit weird. And that's just from having read this book. It, there, there's a lot of contradictions in what they say and what they say they believe and what they do. And it's a very, it's a very strange mishmash of a lot of different things that I didn't fully understand. However, I will say it is beautifully written. It was written in 1853 and the language is lovely. So you could actually read this and forget that you're reading a manual on how to do something because the words and the language used are just absolutely beautiful. And there's a section in here about, um, if I can find it, about the certain skills that a mason should have. And it doesn't, it points out all the different bits and pieces, you know, how how you should live your life and how you should help others and all that kind of stuff. Let me see if I can find it. I bet I can't find it. I should have put a bookmark in there. Here we go. And this, and this suited me quite well because it was about grammar. But I think this is just so beautifully written. Grammar is the key by which alone the door can be opened to the understanding of speech. It is grammar which reveals the admirable art of language and unfolds its various constituents' parts, its names, definitions and respective offices. It unravels, as it were, the thread of which the web of speech is composed. These reflections seldom occur to anyone before their acquaintance with the art, yet it is most certain that without a knowledge of grammar it is very difficult to speak with propriety, precision and purity. And I just think that's lovely. As soon as I read that, I just thought, oh, that's my favourite quote ever in the world. It is just so beautiful. So it's it's an interesting read. A lot of it, I, I will have to say, I did skip over because it did repeat itself quite a lot. And it did perturb me slightly how they believe in peace and freedom but it wasn't allowed to everybody. You had to be a mason to gain knowledge of these things and to gain understanding and experience. And they would say that we need to help each other through life, which I agree with. Everybody struggles and suffers. 
but it only focused on masons so if you saw a mason struggling you would help a fellow mason not you would help a fellow man and i'm very much of the opinion that we are all equal on this planet and if anybody needs our help if anyone needs any sort of charity or love or compassion or friendship we should bestow that upon them regardless of sex or race or anything like that it we we're human beings and this book says that you're only entitled really to these things if you are a mason and i don't like that i don't like i don't like exclusivity i like inclusivity and it did worry me and it worries me that you have to work your way up this scale this degree scale in masonry to gain knowledge now surely knowledge is free we're all able to learn and grow and develop ourselves and i don't think we should have to work our way up in a system to gain knowledge and it's almost a repressive thing the lower down you are the less knowledge you have again i'm not i'm not too sure of why this exists unless it's to lord power over people and again i don't like that like i say i think we should all help each other we should all be willing to support each other through all the problems of the world because there are many many problems and people are suffering and we should help so although this does start off as a moral well-behaved bright outlook kind of book it ends up showing just how little they do care about the world and how much they care about themselves only. So, I don't know, maybe I'm just not understanding it right. Maybe somebody could, could explain it a little bit more. But it, it just seemed very disjointed, very exclusive and not very caring and not very loving to the world but only to themselves and and how far they can raise themselves personally within this system and not how they could share their knowledge and their love and their wealth with the people that need it but like i say it's not really a book to be reviewed it's a how-to guide on how to be a mason and even if I was a man, I wouldn't want to be a part of it because it just seems a bit too weird. It's too secretive. You're not supposed to tell anybody about anything that goes on in a meeting. And if you're married, surely you don't keep secrets from your partner. You would tell them what was going on, but you're not allowed. Certain things aren't written down in here and certain things are even crossed out because they're not to be shared. And I just find that a bit strange. Why would you want to keep secrets from people? Unless it's a surprise birthday party which I understand, that should be kept a secret, but what you get up to when you go to your clubs and your groups and your meetings, why should that be kept secret if you're enjoying yourself, if you like what you do, if you want to share what you do with other people, why hide it away? Why not Why not just be an all-inclusive all group? But that's just me, and that's just that book. So if you are interested, you can pick it up from the library, you can buy it from Amazon, it's freely available, but like I say, how much you can trust it, considering they are so secretive, yeah, I don't know. But I certainly had an interesting time reading it and an interesting time discussing it with people that I worked with who were curious as to what I was reading and why I was reading it. So yeah, a bit strange. I wouldn't join the organisation if I were you, but that's one, one nice thing about freedom. You've got the freedom to choose whether or not you do join, but I would advise you not to. I'd advise you to join a charity and help people that genuinely need it rather than just thinking about yourself. But that's just my opinion. So if you'd like to hear any of my other book reviews, then please subscribe to my channel. I put new videos out every time I've read a book. I occasionally give writing advice and share my own writing with you. So if you're interested in reading and or writing, then please subscribe to my channel and I will see you soon. Bye bye.